At the close of the reading of Elder Pratt's reply to Rev. Dr. Newman, President Young arose and made the following remarks. I feel to bear my testimony to the divine truths of heaven and the revelations given upon the doctrine of celestial marriage. I wish to say a few words upon the subject. I will not appeal to the scriptures, you can read them for yourselves, but I will appeal to the reasoning of revelation direct from heaven, saying nothing about the Old Testament or about any man's work. We find ourselves on this earth, male and female. Whether there are just as many male born as there are females, or just as many females as males, it matters not. Here are facts that we should understand. Man is the Lord of the creation. Man is the head of the woman. Man is accountable to God. Man is the transgressor and must be the restorer. The statistics of both past and present will sustain this. Take, for instance, those of one city in our own government. I mean the city of New York. Since we came to these mountains, I suppose there have perished in the streets and sinkholes of that one city between 250 and 300,000 females from 16 to 20 years of age. This number far exceeds the number of females in these mountains. Some of the leading men of our own government, the adjudicators and framers of the law, are more or less guilty. They suffer and permit it and have a share in it. Is this sin? Yes, it is. It is a national and an individual sin. It is a sin that God will reckon with the people for and for which he will call the nation to account. Man is the transgressor. Will man repent of his sins? No. Man, the head, the king, the lawgiver and protector of this great earth or little earth, whatever you have a mind to call it, is the Lord of the vineyard, the Lord of the earth now. Call upon men, the male portion of the inhabitants of the earth, to repent of their sins, and if they will do so and receive the gospel, how many women would be left who would reject it? They would be just about as scarce as white blackbirds. You will not find one, probably to a million, but what would receive the gospel. And if the husband or father was faithful to its principles, the wife or wives and daughters would be. But men will transgress the law of God. They have done it all the time, and changed the ordinances, and broken the everlasting covenant. Take our own society and see men apostatize, and then women apostatize because the husband or father does so. If the husband and father were to remain faithful, do you think the wife or daughter would apostatize? I reckon not. Man is accountable, and man will have to bear this sin. He will have to pay the debt. Women, generally, are inclined to believe and embrace the truth and live according to its dictates a great deal more than men are. It is no matter with regard to monogamy of Father Adam and Eve. They were just enough to start the work of populating the earth. If man had lived as he ought to have lived, the earth would have been peopled quite soon enough, and to its utmost capacity, but there is enough upon it now, and if men will hearken to, obey the truth, and will cease their adulterous practices and whoredoms, cease their wickedness with the sex, and repent of their sins, we will fling up at once, and will have but one wife. And if there are two or three women left without husbands, we will give them to the best man we can find. The reason the Lord requires his people to practice the principle of celestial marriage is to save those who are willing to be saved, to gather up the pure in heart, those who will hearken to and receive the gospel. We have a great many more women than men in this church, because more of them are inclined to believe the gospel. A great many more females than males leave their families and friends to gather with the saints. For this reason, there are more women than men here. In the world, many men will not marry, and I am ashamed to say that in our own midst, many young men are not inclined to marry. It is their duty to take to themselves wives. I would be willing and should rejoice and be thankful and would praise God if the men would be humble, repent of their sins, turn to God, and take to themselves wives, and save them without putting us to this great trouble. I should be very willing to part with mine and say, if you can only get better men, take them and give them to them. These are the reasons why God has called upon his people in the latter days to enter into the practice of plural marriage. They do not practice it because Abraham did it, or because Jacob did it, or because anybody else did, but they practice it because it is right, because it is a duty imposed upon them by heaven, and it will save the souls of the children of men who receive it. 
According to the reading of the Bible, Isaac was not a polygamist that I am aware of. When he was about forty years old, Abraham called one of his servants to him and said he, Put your hand under my thigh, and swear that you will go unto my country and my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant did get a wife from the lad, and though forty years of age, Isaac, in this and other places, was called the lad. He was not old enough to choose for himself, but the servant of Abraham must go to the house of a certain kinsman, and bring him a kinswoman to wife. But what Isaac did in regard to this matter we care nothing about, nor what anybody else did. God has revealed the fact that this is a celestial law, and he who receives this law shall be blessed. And whosoever receives not this law and rejects it is damned, no matter who, whether kings, princes, presidents, rulers, governors, legislators, or authorities, whether nations or individuals, all who reject this everlasting covenant are damned. I have received it. I received it on this principle, because it was the commandment of the Lord because it was the will of the Lord, and I mean to save all I can. Whether I shall take any more wives or not, I do not know. There may be something to be said on this principle, perhaps, before we get through with our conference. I do not think anybody will have the power to hinder this people going along and serving God and building up his kingdom on the earth. I rather think they will not. They may war, they may legislate, they may take counsel together and devise mischief against God and his anointed, but the work is the Lord's, and I rather think he is able to carry it on if we will do our part. If we will not, we will be removed out of the way, and others called to labor in this great work, and the kingdom of God will prosper, for it is onward and upward, in spite of earth and hell.